Eric Frank here with Performance Ag Indiana. Today we're going to do a product overview of the RPR concave system from CNM Welding out of Frankfurt, Indiana. Today we're going to be installing these on a S680 combine. This is actually our own combine. This is the second set that we're putting in a different machine. The reason that I thought it was crucial for us to start selling the RPR threshing system from CNM Welding was not only because of what it did for our own combine, but really what it can do for your and your farming operation by putting dollars into your pocket. We have Donnie Estes here uh, helping us out today, showing us and explaining some of the setup and the installation of the uh, RPR concave system. But Donnie, can you take us a little bit through the difference between the round bar and your guys' concave and, and what we're seeing thrashing as it's running? Yeah. Um... The biggest complaint that, that we have with the round bar, the original round bar, is this is space between them. You can almost get your finger down. You get your little finger down, but you can't get anything else. In my system, we start with the, the first one, you put your hand in there. And then they get progressively open as we go back. The notch in here is what restricts the flow. And you call that the Pac-Man bar? Yep, a Pac-Man bar. Restricts the flow and forces the material to rub against itself. On round bar concaves, when you get into your field, you'll notice you have rotor loss when you begin, and you'll have rotor loss when you finish up. That's because the concave isn't full. That's because the round bar has no restricted flow in it, and it, it can't force the thrash early enough. It has to fill up, get restriction in there, and then do the thrashing. With my Pac-Man bars, we're thrashing that first crop right when it comes in, and we're finishing it up and separating before, you know, after we shut it down too. So we don't have the rotor loss in the beginning. One thing to remember when taking out the concaves originally, you want to remove the middle section first, then removing the back, then the front. This is a perfect time for you to check over your rotor to make sure any of the thrashing bars are not broken, are not cracked, or missing any bolts. Because with the concaves out, this is a lot easier time to fix them now than when you put your new system in. Make sure the disruptor is fully against the far side of the way the, the crop is going to rotate towards. This will make sure that when it's tightened, it's not going to move anymore. When you put the disruptors in section one, it can get a little tight. So you want to make sure you don't put your concaves in until you get your disruptors all the way in and set. When it's time to install the last part of the RPR concaves, which is the three concaves, install the front section first, the rear section next, and finally the middle section. Then it's time to level the concave. Okay, so Donnie, explain to me kind of what the cover is doing and kind of, um here at Indiana, Illinois, and Iowa, we have a lot of corn growers and soybean growers. Are we using the adjustable cover for much? What are, what are, what's, what's the point of the cover? The cover plate, the cover plate does two things. It lessens the area for the crop to pull through, but it also acts as a cushion for the threshing action. With small grains, you need that cushion. So we put the cover plates on for wheat, milo, beans. Uh, this will make your concave fill up with material. Keep that material up there so you do have material rubbing on material. We put the adjustable cover plates on for high moisture or high uh, yielding wheat crops, milo, barley, uh, where we've got 80 bushels plus we need to uh, open it up. Donnie, explain to us why on when we install the system we need to drop down the where the tines roll through in section one and three with, with the bushings that are normally on top when the combine's installed originally. Well, uh, it's my opinion that the great system is too small. Deer gave you some bushings to open it up for corn. They wanted it closed up for beans and wheat, but and I don't understand. They need more space back there, so that's why I utilize all of them. Right. But I don't put them all down on one side. I, I stagger them. The number one is down, two up, three down, four up. What that does is get how that crop has to go through more bumps before it finally goes out the back. Right. So if we have any corn that gets back here, you have the disruptors in here, mm -hmm. or any crop that's back here, what what is the disruptor? I mean, it pretty, sounds pretty self-explanatory. It's disrupting the movement of the grain. It's the uh, internal straw jumper. Okay. 
Basically two. Yeah. Yep. You got the fingers and then you got the tines forces and material to it. And you can loop it in. Uh, we only use a half a set if you want to bail your weed straw. Okay. We take the four out that are easiest to get to from this side. Okay. But still leave the front three in because there is some rotor loss in weed and this is helping. And are we doing this also in the red combines the same way? No, we're not. In the red combines, I don't offer any, I don't offer disruptors. Right. They will bolt into their skip wire concaves. Okay. They all are running skip wires in the back for separation, all that I've done. Okay. So, and all I'm selling in the red ones is the four front pricing with the cover plate. Correct. Yes. Okay. But at least that, that allows but our viewers to know. That. I do have disruptors, and they also they need to know that they're going to need, uh, with the axle blows, you're going to need 34 rice spike bars. Rice spike bars? It's a bar like your regular rotor bar, but it's got a, a three quarter of an inch thumb on it, finger on it. And that is what's going to run down against the disruptor at the bottom. You're going to have the disruptor at the bottom and then these right spike bars is what's going to first force the material through it. We put disruptors in the old axial flows. Well, I got my patent in 95. So, so years ago you yeah. started working with those. But as far as the deer system, those are the only ones we're going to drop down section right. one and section three on just, just to help those out. Perfect. All right. And leveling the combine is there's in the direction with the disruptors. It is, there's a YouTube video that is on how to do it and make sure you do it before you go to the field make sure you get that combine level i've seen some of them guys will call me up and they're overloading this or not there's something wrong i said have you leveled your concrete and they said no don't know how well they do it and then they never call you again so. <laughs> problem solved all they have to do is read right. the instructions right. some days <laughs> some days that's a little harder to do than what you expect <laughs> Thanks for watching. We hope this will help you out. And we invite you to stop by and see us at the 2015 Farm Progress Show.